Hi, and welcome back to another episode of More To Music. In today's composer series, we'll be learning about one of the biggest names in classical music. Have a guess. <laughs> Mozart. Did you guess it? As always, we'll go back to where it all started. Ah, yes, Salzburg on the 27th of January in 1756. Leopold and Anna Maria welcomed baby Mozart, uh. or should I say, Johannes, Johannes Chrysostomus Wolfgangus Theophilus Mozart, although he generally called himself Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I can't think why. Would you keep all those names? So, what was life like in Salzburg when Mozart was born? So technically, the Holy Roman Empire was still a thing. This is where large chunks of Western and Central Europe are basically ruled by one person. Joseph II was in charge for most of Mozart's life. His whole political aim was called enlightened absolutism, which is basically trying to modernize everything. Anyway, back to Mozart. From an early age, he was actually playing piano and violin pretty well. He started composing when he was only five years old, although his amazing talents weren't surprising because his dad was also an established performer and composer. Leopold Mozart actually famously wrote this piece called The Toy Symphony. It uses things from the average child's toy box, like a ratchet, a toy trumpet, and a bird song. Have a listen and see if you can hear them. Do you think this should become more of a trend? Naturally, Mozart was branded as a child prodigy, which in the 1700s was a major trend. So the typical thing to do was to go on tour, or they called it exhibiting. In 1763, Mozart, his father, and his sister went on tour of Europe. He spent over a year in London too, playing at social events for the high flyers in society. Don't forget, all this travel around Europe actually took years because back then they didn't have any planes or cars. He was doing all this travel by horse and carriage. Although once he was in his teens, the whole novelty of a child prodigy kind of wore off. But Mozart wasn't a one hit wonder. He came home to Salzburg to work for the Archbishop. What do you think about this trend of exhibiting child prodigies? I think it's pretty savage. It's a bit like showing an animal in a zoo. Thank goodness we have YouTube to show off child prodigies now. So although Mozart was branded a child prodigy, this didn't mean he wasn't a hard worker. He worked all day and all night composing and performing and it paid off. He quickly outgrew Salzburg and moved to Vienna, which was like going to Hollywood to achieve your dream. And achieve those dreams he did. He regularly sold out piano performances and received lots of commissioned work. So what made Mozart's music so special? Why did he stand out? Basically, he got it all right. He wrote what people wanted to hear. Whether it was an opera, a concerto, or a symphony, he just always nailed it. Clarity, balance, and transparency were the hallmarks of Mozart's music. He brought music back to its basics. It just worked. Mozart's most Grammy-worthy piece would definitely be his Symphony No. 40 in G minor. It was one of only two symphonies that he wrote in this key. It was completed in 1788 after only a few weeks of work, <laughs> which is seriously <laughs> impressive. It shows interest in this new movement called Storm and Stress, which is where the music is really dark and has very strong emotions. Sadly, 1788 was a particularly dark year for Mozart. His infant daughter passed away and his work started to dry up, which naturally meant the bills started to pile up too. So as you can imagine, he must have been going through some stuff. You can really hear that dark undertone to this piece, but it's still really enjoyable to listen to. What do you think? Is it too stormy? On the other hand, it's really hard to find a Mozart piece that we don't know because people have been devoting their whole careers to researching this guy and documenting all his music. But here's one you might not know. Mozart's Notturno for four orchestras. It's definitely underrated and underperformed. Although that could be because it's so complicated. As the title suggests, it has four orchestras, so conductors generally struggle to keep it together. I think it's such a shame because Mozart has such a cool echo effect going on between the four orchestras and it creates a water-like flow. Do you think it should be played more? So there's not much more about Mozart to really tell because sadly he died of a fever when he was only 35. Although impressively, he still managed in that short space of time to write 200 two hours of music. Before we go, here's a fun fact for you. In the 1990s, a scientific study found that listening to Mozart music might show a significant improvement on performing basic mental tasks. So definitely get listening to Ina Klein and Nacht music while revising to get those top grades. Make sure and leave a comment below of what you think about Mozart's music. 
Does it help you concentrate? That's all for today's episode. Make sure and leave a comment of what composer you would like to learn about next. Thanks for watching. Thank you.